Hi there, my name is Vic Veer. I'm an ENT consultant surgeon working in central London for the National Health Service in England. In this video, I'm going to tell you all about nasal sprays and how to use them correctly, because there's really no point to taking a nasal spray, getting all the side effects and none of the benefits. So in this video, I'm going to tell you five tips and one bonus tip at the end of how to use these things properly. So the first thing you have to remember is that for this spray to work, it needs to go up into your nose and stay in your nose for it to work. This seems very obvious, but I see an awful lot of people when they use the spray, spray like this, and then they go, and snip it right up and then you end up tasting it and it all goes away. So the first tip is really, if you spray this up your nose, do not sniff straight away. Leave it in your nose for it to work and for it to sort of marinate inside your nose. The longer it stays in your nose, the longer it stays in contact with the lining of your nose, the more it will work, the better it will work for you. So now we're on to tip number two. If you're going to spray these sprays up your nose, you need to make sure the spray actually touches the lining of your nose. It doesn't touch the mucus or the bogey or whatever else is in your nose. So what I recommend you do is you clean out your nose of all the mucus and all the, the debris inside your nose using some salt water or, or like a hypertonic sterimol, which is what this is. If you've got sinus problems, I'd use uh, Neil Med sinus ritz and I'll leave a picture of it just here somewhere. Don't use water, obviously, because water makes your nose even more congested than before. But the idea is that you use the salt water to flush out all that mucus so when you eventually do go onto your spray, when you spray it and you don't sniff up, when you spray it and it stays in your nose and it sits on the actual skin, not on the mucus, because you're not trying to treat the mucus, you're trying to treat the actual lining of your nose. So now we're on to tip number three. What we're trying to do is get the spray up into your nose and hit the areas which are most likely to swell up and cause you blockage. You need to know a little bit of anatomy for this. This little part here in the middle is called the septum or the midline partition of your nose is the septum and that doesn't really swell up an awful lot. The areas that do swell up are actually on the sides, on the outside or the lateral part of your nose. And in this area, you have things called the turbinates. The turbinates are a bit like gills when you see them side on. They're these things that come in. So if you've got the side wall of your nose like this, and they come in like this. There's an inferior, middle, superior, and even the supreme. So sometimes they're up to four of these sort of uh, outpouchings or just sort of areas which look like gills on the side. And these swell up and shrink down depending on how fast you're breathing in, uh, if you're allergic to anything, or, or even what side you sleep on. If you sleep on this side, this side of your nose will open up, the turbinates will shrink down, but the turbinates will swell up on this side. If you slept on this side, however, the opposite happens. If you Sometimes if you press on the side of your arm here, it's called an Epley's reflex, that can cause your turbinates to shrink down on the other side. It's a very weird reflex. There's also something called a nasal cycle where the turbinates take it in turns to swell up and shrink down. But that's beside the point. What I'm trying to show you is that the spray should be getting to the turbinates which are on the side of your nose, not in the midline. So when you spray this up your nose, what I recommend is that if you're spraying into your right, this is my right nostril, you use your right hand and you point it towards your ear. So you're pointing it that way towards your ear because you're trying to get it to the turbulence which sit laterally or just near where this bone is here. You're not trying to put it directly back or directly up. Going up doesn't make any sense at all because there's nothing up there. You breathe through the bottom part of your nose down there, not up there. And when you're going on to the left side, you change hands so your left hand for your left nostril and then you can point it towards this ear again. So it just naturally, your hand sits in that position which means that it points the right direction. Again, before you spray, Clean your nose out firstly with this and spray and don't sniff it up. Leave it in your mouth, breathe through your mouth afterwards. Don't go because then by the time you taste it, it's all gone. Now, some people may be taking steroid sprays because of polyps that can occur inside your nose. Now, this is actually between the, inf the inferior and the middle turbinate. So in that little space between the two, polyps arise from that area there. You don't get polyps arising from the septum of your nose. So again, this works for people with polyps as well. Aim it sort of that way towards your earlobe, just about here. The better you direct these sprays and you don't sniff it up and you clean it out beforehand, the better you do that, the less chance there is for you to need an operation or, or to have your polyps removed again. So tip number four, do not sneeze directly after spraying this up your nose because all of that good stuff is going to come out and you're not going to get treated as you want to be treated. Now this may be easier said than done, but a trick to stop you from sneezing straight after doing this is that if you feel a sneeze is about to come on, press very hard here, just underneath your septum or just underneath the nose just here, press hard against the top teeth and press really hard so it slightly hurts that will get rid of the sneeze. So the, the urge of a sneeze will just go away if you catch it early enough like this. Some people just press straight away after spraying this because they know they always sneeze after putting the spray up their nose. 
That little technique of pressing hard here is quite useful as well if you've been told after an operation that don't sneeze or try and sneeze with your mouth open because you may start bleeding. All you have to do is press very hard here and the urge of sneezing will just go away. So we're on to tip number five now. We're nearly to the end. You need to make sure you're on the right spray for your problem and make sure you're not taking too much of the wrong spray. So for example, decongestants such as Sudafed and Otravine, you can only use those for about five to seven days. If you use them any longer than that, you'll get something known as rhinitis medicamentosa, which means that your nose sort of becomes addicted to it. You keep using those Otravine type decongestant sprays. Eventually your nose gets more and more reliant on it. And you'll find that the effectiveness of these decongestant sprays get shorter and shorter and shorter. So initially, oh wow, this spray worked for eight hours. But if you use it for longer than a week, you'll find that, oh, actually it's only lasting a few hours now and I have to keep using it. And you end up using it all day, every day, uh, spraying all the time. And what's happening is that your nose, the decongestant stops all the blood flow that goes to your nose. This works brilliantly if you've got a cold for a few days and you can use the decongestant spray during a cold or during sinusitis just to open up your nose very quickly. But the problem with decongestants, if you're not letting any blood go into your nose, your nose gets desperate for oxygen. So as soon as the decongestant effect wears off, the blood pours back in, your nose sort of swells up and you can't breathe at all. Then you reach for the decongestant again to try and get that spray to work again, trying to unblock your nose. You get into say, a horrible cycle where you're constantly trying to clear your nose and you're using the Otravine more and more eventually you're sort of addicted to it. So if you end up using decongestants a lot, you get some of the side effects people commonly see with people who use too much cocaine. So just don't use it for more than four or five days. It's really important and it protects your nose from getting this horrible problem, rhinitis medicamentosa. So some of you have been given some steroid sprays for your nose and some of them are very good. Some of them aren't so good because you can only use them for about three months at a go. So, so these are some of the names of drugs that you can't use for more than three months. Otherwise you get some of the long-term bad effects of using these steroid sprays because the steroid doesn't just stay in your nose, it percolates through the rest of your body, give you side effects for your whole body rather than just staying in your nose. So some of these sprays that you can get, which you only should be using for less than three months, are the equivalent to taking oral tablets of steroids and therefore, and therefore you can get all the side effects of steroids. And I'll give you some of the uh, list of things that can happen to you here. There are some steroid sprays out there which have very low bioavailability. And what that means is that when you spray it up your nose, it just stays in your nose. It doesn't go through your whole body. It doesn't give you side effects throughout the rest of your body. And that's why you can use them long term. So this spray here, um, Pyrenades, which you can buy from Tesco or any supermarket, is also known as fluticasone propionate. And this spray is quite safe. That's why you can get it over the counter, whereas you can't get some of these other sprays I was telling you about. And people have been on these for decades and have not had many side effects at all. So they're much safer than the other drugs, which basically are just taking steroids. So now the bonus tip. Now the reason why it's a bonus tip is not really a nasal spray I'm telling you about. It's about something called Flixanase Nasals. I'll leave another picture of it up there. Now this is sort of like Flutixone Propen, it's slightly different. And what you get is a little ampule of this stuff, like a little uh, canister, and you pour this into your nose. I see an awful lot of people sort of doing this, where they pour it up their nose like this, and it goes down the back of their nose and goes straight into their throat. Doing that is never going to work because again, you know that it needs to stay in your nose for as long as possible. If you're going to use a very strong drug such as uh, Flixanase nasals, you need to stay in your nose for as long as possible. So what you're meant to do uh, is get into, your, get into a Muslim prayer position, it's called. What you need to do is turn your head straight upside down, right around, so your nose is, the nostrils are pointing up towards the ceiling. It's quite hard to do. And then you pour the stuff into your nose with your nose straight upside down and then you fill up your nose and hold it in your nose for as long as possible. 30 seconds, few minutes if you can tolerate it. The longer that stuff stays in your nose, the better it'll work. If you just do this, you'll notice it'll just go straight into your throat and it's gone. It's pointless if you do that and, and you're probably getting the side effects of taking steroids as well. Keep it in your nose for as long as you possibly can. Hope you found those tips useful. If you use those tips, I think you'll find these sprays become far more effective for you. If they're more effective, hopefully you can avoid having surgery or some other intervention. As always, there are links to these medications in the description. Please have a look at them. Like I say, you can get some of these off Amazon and they're far safer than some of the other drugs that are out there. Thank you very much for watching.